Good day to you, viewer, and thank you for joining us at this hour of Born to Lead, where we teach leadership from God's perspective, perspective as it were. We appreciate you for making our time to want to grow and to grow your leadership. And it is our prayer that at this hour, you will learn something definite, something impactful that will help you to be a better civil servant, will help you to be an usher in church, will help you to be a better pastor, will help you be a better executive wherever you find yourself, will help you to be a better child to your parents, and will help your parents to be a better child, uh, better parents to you. So this is a program for everyone, and um, particularly the youths, as you try to grow your leadership. Today we're going to be talking about what do you see? And basically we're going to talk about the impact of vision as far as leadership is concerned. So it's in that regard that um, we're going to read from the book of Genesis chapter 13 and then from verse 14 to 18. So if you don't mind, please join me as I read from the book of Genesis chapter 13 and we'll take from verse... Um, 14 all the way to 18. I read. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lord was Lot was separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if any man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and brings life to dying souls and to dying environments. We thank you because all we will ever need to learn as far as leadership is concerned is packaged in your word. And we bless your name for drawing it out that we may learn and be better instruments in your hands, particularly in this generation and at a time like this. Please, as I speak, Lord, speak through me and speak to me also. For in Jesus' name we have asked. Amen. Abraham was a friend of God. And at the age of 75, God called him to leave his father's home to go to a new land to settle down. And the Bible records that as Abraham moved from uh, Genesis chapter 12, as Abraham moved to that new place where God had shown to him, his nephew Lot went with him. And because Lot had dwelt with Abraham, and God had in turn blessed Lot, Lot became very rich, wealthy in cattle, wealthy in sheep, and to the extent that his servants began to fight Abraham's servants, and it became an issue. Well, as leaders, sometimes we bear unnecessary burdens on ourselves. Because when God was calling Abraham, he called him and called his immediate household. And Lot wasn't supposed to be an immediate household of Abraham. But of course, the Bible was particular in Genesis chapter 12 verse 5 to say, and Lot went with him. Lot became a headache. Lot became a bone in Abraham's neck to the extent 
that one day Abraham called a family meeting and decided to allow Lot go away from his household so that he could focus on God and concentrate on the call that God had over his life. Well, again, Lot, being a foolish young man, was given the privilege to choose first. And rather than allow his uncle to choose first, he chose first. And what he chose was that he raised his head, looked at the green grass and a lush place, and decided this is where my wife and I would go and settle down. Of course, he had seen, but had not seen well. So I ask you, what do you see? What do you see? Because some of us love life easy. Love to have life on a smooth plane. But usually, like the Bible describes, broad is the way and many it is that go therein because destruction is on that pathway. Lot looked and saw green grass and went there. But graciously, graciously, God had ensured that his family was secured even in that land that he went to because, of course, he was going to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah where Sodomy was the order of the day. Now, because he contended with Abraham for space and Abraham let him go, Abraham now had the privilege to begin to see clearly. Every time that we take unnecessary burdens upon ourselves as leaders, it blurs our vision. It blocks our face. It stops us from seeing. You will remember as a Bible study student, or as a Bible student rather, that every time that Jesus' disciples tended to suggest to him that he shouldn't die or he shouldn't go or that they should call fire from heaven to consume cities, Jesus rebuked them because he knew that listening to them will be a distraction and it will blur his vision. As a leader, as leaders that God has called us to be, we must move away from unnecessary distractions, from unnecessary burdens. There are certain people that God has not called you to help. Do not put upon your shoulder a responsibility to help someone who is even refusing to be helped. So, Lot moved away. Abraham's vision became clearer. When we separate from all non-necessities, we can then properly begin to see and to listen to God. Every distraction, every unnecessary burden constitutes a distraction to, our, to, our, to, to, the, to, the, to the vision that God has given to us. And every good leader has good vision. Your vision is a picture of your expected end. Your vision must be a vision of a brighter future than where you are at the moment. You may be excelling as a pastor. You may be excelling as a student. You may be excelling as a housewife. But you must look beyond today's excellence and build for future excellence. Because again, the glory of the latter house is always greater than the former or should always be greater than the former. Abraham began to see clearly once those unnecessary details or unnecessary visions were removed from his sight. You remember when Abraham slept with Hagar and in the process had a son called Ishmael, Ishmael became a distraction to Abraham. And even God could not get Abraham's attention. Read those verses again. You would see that Abraham had gotten Hagar at the age of 80, 86 and that God did not come again to Abraham until he was 99 
about 13 years had passed because of that destruction of his vision. Children of God, fellow leaders, what is it that is standing between you and what God wants you to see? Well, after all those events, uh, particularly with Lot, Abraham began to see, and God appeared to him and said, What do you see? What do you see? Lift up your eyes. Look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Whatever you see is what I will give to you. What an interesting thing. Whatever you see is what I will give to you. If Abraham had looked closely, God was going to give him a close land. But Abraham obviously decided to look far. And because he looked far, then God could bless him with all that he saw. And I ask you too, what do you see? What is your vision? What do you see by way of vision? You know, many years ago when men never used to fly, Mr. Wright went to a Christian mission school and in his discussion with the principal of the school, they were exposing how science was growing and the principal suggested that, you see, at the rate that science was growing, it will not be long before people began to fly. And guess what Mr. Wright said? Mr. Wright said, God forbid that that will never happen. That before it happens, Jesus would have returned. Well, guess what? His two sons were constructing an airplane at his backyard. Those men saw beyond their father. They saw and knew of the fact that human beings could fly in the sky. And that was what they saw. And they pursued it vigorously with every intent, with every blood, with every sweat that God had deposited in them. And today, it's a foregone issue that men can not only fly on the sky, but men can even fly to the moon and, and other places. Why? Because two men, the right brothers, saw beyond what the ordinary eyes could see. What is the vision that you have? What do you see? There are several advantages that come with a good vision. You see, even the television that you are watching now is as a result of someone's vision. Whatever is around you now is as a result of what someone could see. And I challenge you, what is that thing that you see in the inside of your heart? that requires interpretation on the outside. Well, for want of time, perhaps I should just spell out some of the um, advantages that come when you are a person of vision. The advantages that come through vision is the fact that you see the big picture. You are not stuck with unnecessary details. You see the big picture that nothing around you distracts you. People of vision think beyond themselves and they look at generations after them. Actually, their concern is not for themselves and their family. It is for the generation after their own generation. Abraham saw the land and looked beyond himself and the one child he would have. And thought of the millions of people that God was promising him to have. And so he looked farther and farther away from where he was. If you're a person of vision, you would see the big picture. So that such little accidents and distractions do not pull you away from the big, uh, from the big picture. People of vision know that their ultimate goals are definite and clear to them and to others. But that they know, even if it is not clear to others, it is very clear to them. 
their ultimate goal is constantly before them. Before I studied law, I knew of the subjects that were necessary for me to study. And I paid attention to those studies. There were all sorts of distractions by other students. Uh, let's read this. Let's read that. Let's study this book. All those were a distraction to me. Because my ultimate goal was ahead of me. And nothing could stop me from pursuing that goal. In fact, a few friends suggested, because I was always noisy in the class, I was dramatic and so on, they suggested I should read the theater arts. And I considered it, actually. In those days, in jam, you could have two, three options. And I put theater arts as a second option. But glory to God, I got admitted to study law. And the subjects that were necessary for me to study law were the subjects that I paid attention to dearly. So, if you have vision, your ultimate goals are definite and they are clear to you as well as clear to others. Vision will help you become more focused. There are lights in this studio, but I'm not feeling the heat because the light is not focused directly at me. But when you convert that light or when you focus that light, you narrow that light to become laser. It will pierce through my skin. Why? Because focus helps you pierce through stubborn situations. And it takes vision for you to be focused. You need vision for you to be focused and attentive at whatsoever you need to do such that even problems become stepping stones to you. Again, look at the scripture. Look at the life of Joseph. He had a vision of becoming a king or some sort of a ruler. And you know, when his brother sold him, it was not a distraction to him. Because he had a focus. Even in slavery, he became the best slave. As a foreign slave, he became the best slave. In his master's house. He was so focused. That when his master's wife. Needed him to add to his agenda. A relationship with her. He turned it down. Because a focused mind. A person of vision is focused. And a focused mind can never be distracted. So if you have vision. You become focused. And you become like laser. You cut through every situation. No matter how difficult the situation is. Also, you are not disappointed or distracted by some temporary setbacks. In fact, like I said earlier on, setbacks become temporary and they also become stepping stones. You build upon them. Joseph was thrown to the prison because he refused to sleep with his master's wife. And even in prison, he became the best prisoner to the extent that the prison warden handed over the prison to him. What the prisoners ate, how they lived, was on, David's, um, or sorry, on Joseph's neck because every setback, every distraction was a stepping stone for him to make progress. A person with vision becomes a pace setter. He does not wait for others to create a road. He creates the road and move on it. He, sleep is no longer attractive if you are pursuing a vision. You are a pace setter. Your attempt is to Set a trail for others to follow behind. Mark Zuckerberg, the young man who invented Facebook, were told that for the period that he needed to set up Facebook properly, he cut off himself from friends. He cut off himself, even from family members. He was living in his father's garage. And day and night, he was working on trying to establish Facebook. Today, he has set Facebook and he's more or less like the pace setter as far as, um, 
as far as social media is concerned. In other words, you can say he is the leader of social media. That's how, how pace setters behave. And pace setting comes with a vision. You must have a vision. People with vision live by the sense of purpose and direction. They have a direction. They have a purpose. They know the reason for what they are doing, what they are doing. Abraham, because he was a man of vision, lived in a tent. He never built a city. And so even when God talked to him, it was easy for him to gather his tent and move to Mamre because, you know what? He, he is a man of vision. He knew that as a man of vision, he was also a man of purpose and he had direction. My guess is that when Abraham was leaving his father's house at age 75, there were people who were laughing at him. How can you start ministry at age 75? Look at you, you have not even given birth to a child. Stay here and inherit your father. Gain all that you could gain from your father. After all, your other brothers are scattered. One is dead and the other nobody knows some, anything about. But of course... As a man of purpose and direction, he followed God even to a land that he didn't know of. He just simply walked and followed God. This is the life of people with vision. People with vision achieve much and have offsprings come after them. Abraham achieved much. In fact, as Christians, you know, we sing Abraham's blessings are mine. Why? Because of the achievements that he had. He had achievements in terms of wealth. He had achievement in terms of spirituality. Even children, most of us forget or have not read that besides Ishmael and, and Isaac, Abraham had other sons and daughters after Sarai died. Most of us do not know. But you know what? He had several offsprings. And by the way, whether you have biological offsprings or not, if you are a man of vision, you will see people trooping after you. You will see people running after you. Because that is what vision does for you. To develop a good vision, you need God. The Bible tells us to commit our works to the Lord and they shall be established. Abraham committed himself to God and all of his works became established. And so my challenge to you this hour and my question to you is what is your relationship with God? Because it is from God that you get a good vision. It is from a connection with God that you get a vision that will last not only for yourself but will last generations after you. To get a good vision, you need a sound relationship with God. Remember, every one of us was created to be a leader. And to be a good leader, you must meet he who created you so that you can understand his mind concerning you. And that way you can have a good vision. Thank you. I've come to the end of today's session. And I do pray that you spend time before God to seek him, to understand him, and to know what his plans and purposes are for your life so that you can get a good vision. The world is waiting for you, actually. There are things you have dreamt of, but you are so afraid to bring them to pass. Why? Because you are not close to God. God is waiting upon you. Draw close to him, and he will draw close to you. That way, you will get a sound vision. And that way, you will help not only yourself and your family, you will help the entire world because the world is actually waiting for you. Thank you for this time. Once again, let me make an appeal that for every one of you who has been learning from these lessons and you have been growing, there is a need for us to continue to have this program on TV and it comes at a cost. 
Therefore, my encouragement to us this hour is that you team up with Born to Lead so we can continue to have this program on TV and so you can continue to grow as God will have you to grow. Now, our account number is on the screen. I encourage you to send whatever you can um, in regard to this ministry. And I'm certain that God will help you even to um, succeed as you try to practice what we're teaching. It's a Guaranteed Trust Bank account, GTB Guaranteed Trust Bank, and the name of the account is Born to Lead. As you do so, I'm certain that God will bless you and bless your household. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for today's lesson. And thank you for opening our eyes to know that it is what we see in our hearts and mind that we can bring to pass on planet Earth. And for everyone that you have called, you have given us things to see, things beyond us, beyond our families, beyond this generation, even to the next generation. Therefore, I beg you that you give us confidence to bring out what you have created in us to see so that every one of us will stand and stand in you. Bless our supporters, O God, and increase them bountifully. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.